What is Making It Monday? Making It Monday is about an hour of stitching with me in my workroom, giving me a little bit of time actually just for me. And this week we're going to make a mini moppy, which is this little beauty here, which is just so delicious. I love it so much. It's so cute. I mean, I love the fabrics, new fabric from Riley Blake, but it's absolutely gorgeous. And we're gonna make another one of these. Now, the reason why I called it mini moppy is because big moppy, which is here, that's the original one, okay? That's my, my one of my patterns, and it's called Moppy. And it's called Moppy because it resembles a mop cap, okay, because of the, the gathering here. And it's one of my patterns on my shop, and you have to pay for it because of the amount of work that, it, that goes into it. Um, so this is Big Moppy, okay? So I made Mini Moppy <laughs> as a kind of compliment, if you like, to, to Big Moppy, okay? And... Um, and because it's a free pattern, and uh, please go to my website, lizzycurtis.com, go to the shop, get the download, there's loads of downloads on there, and it says free patterns, and you click on that, and then all 13 projects, I know, we're on 13, will be listed there, and you can take the whole lot, you can just take one, it's entirely up to you, but they're all free. It says it's a pound, yep because it's a shop. But if you in the coupon box put free, then you'll get it for free, okay? And I've upped the price to a pound because it actually then covers the costs, the admin costs of going through PayPal or your credit or debit card if you do decide to pay. So I've had to up it to a pound. Otherwise it's almost minus. Um, <laughs> so the other thing is these little patterns that I do for Making It Monday are super simple, okay? They are super simple. You might get eight photographs, a little bit of instruction underneath. You, you'll always get the measurements and dimensions and all that sort of thing, but they are a simplified version of one of my patterns. Um, so don't ever think um, that they're going to be as complicated and, and as extensively written as my main patterns. They absolutely won't be, because it just takes me a morning to write the pattern, make it up, do all the photography, write it up, put it in the shop. It takes me four or five hours to do a little project like this, which is lovely, and I love it. And I always spend Friday morning doing that. That's my thing. I'm really enjoying it. So uh, that's Mini Moppy. So I just wanted to give you a comparison because um, somebody did make a complaint the other day that my patterns are very simple. They are absolutely not. If you were to buy one of my patterns, they're incredibly comprehensive. And this is, this is a pattern that we actually made in a workshop yesterday. Um, it's Delia, the bag I'll show you in a sec. And you'll see, and I'll just try and flick through as much as I can, that it's about 15 pages. It's incredibly comprehensive. There's photographs in there. Hold on. There's tons and tons of photographs, bigger photographs as well. A lot more instruction in there as well. Plus, and, and that's not all, plus there's at least three pages, perhaps even four pages of pattern parts. Um, again, very comprehensive. Uh, I'll show you one pattern part just so you know what I'm talking about. That's one of the pattern pieces for that, that pattern pack Delia, okay? And this is Delia. This is the bag that we made yesterday, okay? So the idea is with Making It Monday is that I do a very simple project, nothing too complicated. Um, it, I, can, I can sort of put it together quite quickly and, and it's free. That's the main thing, that it's free. So I'm hoping that you're enjoying it. I, in fact, I know you are. I know you are. I know you're loving it. The amount of photographs I've seen has been phenomenal. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, which will be up on my YouTube channel, it's always the following day on a Tuesday, um, you're perhaps not interested in Facebook, and I appreciate that completely. But what you can do, of course, is hop over to my website, lizzycurtis.com, and you can still download the pattern for free, um, and you can still make the project up, and lucky for you, that video will already be there, and you can just follow along if you want to. So that is Making It Monday. Oh, thank you very much, Lynn. I'm getting stars, isn't it fab? 
So, like I always say, and I'm going to put you down on my desk in a minute, and that's probably where you'll stay for most of the hour, because um, I've got to remember what time we started, because we're a bit late, weren't we? Um, when you print, don't print that front page, even though it looks pretty, it's very ink heavy. I say that every week. And now what I've decided to do on the second page, I like to be consistent. So I like to have that front page. But now what I'm starting to do is on the second page, you're getting the project, you're getting the name of it and you're getting the picture. So <clears throat> you can keep them all together. So with, um, with Mini Muppy, um, there's just a few pieces to cut out ready. You'll need some ribbon to thread through the channels and it's a very simple make. It's kind of, it's a little bit similar to the caddy that we made a few weeks back, but not, not really the same at all. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just making sure we're, we're all okay. Yep, all okay, I'm just checking the comments, guys. Now on YouTube, I do go through all the comments and I always love what you say. So don't ever think you're being excluded because you're not. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put you down on my desk and you're gonna stay there for quite a while because of course, not because I haven't got the cameras, I can't flick between the two. So hopefully this will work for you. And I'm, as I say, I do apologize for the, for the uh, inconvenience of it all. Anyway, let's try and push you down without me cutting you off. Okay, so let's get you down here and I'm gonna just move you across my desk as well. And that's not too bad, is it? Let's just let's just keep it like that. That's absolutely not too bad at all. Lovely. So I've got my fabric ready. I've got a gorgeous pink fabric here, a bit of Riley Blake. And again, I've got the lining here. And what I'm going to do is I've got my channels. So this is my lining. So my channels are going to be in the matching fabric um, as the, the lining. And of course, that, this is the pattern piece that you'll get as well. So, you, you know, you do get a very simplified pattern piece in there as well. So it's not too bad for free, is it? And then you've got the base for the lining. OK, and then you've got the base for the outer. Isn't that such a pretty fabric? I love it. Um, so the first thing we need to do is to make the channels. And so what I always try to do is to start from the very beginning, apart from the cutting. You don't want to be seeing that. Um, but then sort of take you through step by step. You can either make it with me or you can make it afterwards. Obviously that, that decision is yours. Um, I need my spray to do the wadding, so I'll get that in a second. Um, so just waiting for my iron to heat up. So the first thing you're going to do is just going to fold over the ends of the channels. It's not very well cut, is it? <laughs> I did that in a bit of a hurry this afternoon. It's a bit wonky. Um, so you're going to press over these ends about a quarter of an inch. Please don't measure. About a quarter of an inch. And this is just because you could do this without pressing, guys. You could do it with a finger press or just pop it under the machine. But if you're a new stitcher, all of these things that I show you are things that you'll learn to do you must do it straight away, you know, you must sort of follow it because you're new and you don't know, let's say, you don't know what else to do. But then after a little while, your confidence will absolutely soar. And then you'll think, well, I don't need to do that anymore. I can just bung it under the machine. Yes, you can. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to keep my iron on, just pop it out of the way, bring my machine in. Let's just try and move that. I'm going to try and get it so you can see a little bit. And I know it's not um, always brilliant, but we'll do our best. Let's try and get it in. There we go. That's not too bad, actually, is it? And all you're going to do is top stitch those ends over. OK, now have I got it switched on? Yes, should have. Um, and all you're going to do, like I say, is you're just going to stitch those ends. And if you've got a two and a half in a 2.5 setting on your machine, just leave it there. When we come to top stitch, you could increase that stitch length to three. Uh, if you've got a thread cutter, it's amazing. <laughs> and just tidy your and clip your ends as you go, just to make them nice and neat. And then we we'll just do the other ends. So straight across and then don't ever be afraid of chain stitching. So all you're doing is pushing that one in as you're going along and your feet dogs take it through. Um, try it and see if you like it. If, if you're a bit nervous about it, don't try it. Um, 
So now we've got two pieces of fabric that have the ends nice and neat. And if you wanted to, you can just press those out. So the next thing to do is to press the, um, the, the long edges in, okay? So once again, let's do it on the side so you can just see what I'm doing. Now, ideally, it's gonna be a quarter of an inch. Um, and what you'll find is that the long raw edges will not meet. Okay, does that make sense? So we'll just fold one and then we'll fold the wonky edge, try and get it fairly decent. Oops, nearly lost my scissors. Come here, scissors. Um, so about a quarter of an inch. Again, don't measure, but be careful because if you do it too narrow, um, you won't be able to get your ribbon through and it won't look neat. So that's what it's gonna look like, okay? Um, you're gonna have a gap. So don't think that those um, raw edges are gonna meet. You're gonna have that gap. And that's quite important. So you might think that they had to meet, but they don't. Um, <clears throat> so if you think your channel is a bit narrow, you might want to look back on the video and think, oh no, I, I, you know, I, I, made, I made them meet. You know, it's like bias binding, that meets, doesn't it, in the middle, well, this doesn't. Um, and it's, it's, for me, it's about the perfect width, especially for the ribbon I'm choosing. So on the outside, it's beautifully neat. And on the inside, you've got, if I can get my hands in the right place, you've got that gap going down the center, okay? And we're gonna top stitch that onto our beautiful bit of pink fabric. So I'm just gonna turn my iron off. Always, always, always turn your iron off, guys, okay? Um, just, you know, I, it's e it'll be easy to switch it on, uh, leave it on and um, forget about it if you leave the room. And you know what, you know, you know what the consequences of that would be, horrendous. Um, and a little tip my mum used to do was she always had the radio on in the same sort of extension lead, I suppose, as her iron. So if the radio was playing when she left the room, she knew that she still had her iron on. Isn't that clever? <laughs> That's clever. <laughs> so, so I just say welcome to all the, the new viewers that are watching tonight. Um, you've missed a treat. You've missed um, 12 other weeks of me doing these Facebook Lives. Um, you'll find some on YouTube and you'll find some on uh, this, this Facebook page. And um, don't forget to join in on the Making It Monday group. Go ahead and join that group. There's, there's no entry fee. There's no criteria. You can just... Um, just go and say you want to join. So let me just find my pattern because I want to make sure I'm doing this right. So in the picture, <laughs> I had to do this because on the fabric I used, you couldn't see where the dots were. So I kind of put two pens, when you look at it in the pictures, two blue pens, but you'll see two pens like this and that's showing you where the dots are on the, on the picture. And it was the best thing I could do. If I turn it this way, so you'll see, I had it, that's, the, that's what picture you've got in your instructions, <laughs> which I thought was fun. But actually that was just there for the photography part of things. So you want to measure an inch down, roughly, uh, let's have a look, let's have a look, an inch down from the top, yes. And you want to measure, so let's just make a mark where that's an inch down. And that's just my mark. I'll show, you, I'll show you when I've done the marks for actually putting this on, okay? So what I need is one and a half, what, sorry, one and, one and a quarter, 1.25, so one and a quarter from the sides. And these are the sides because this is the raw edge. And it says one inch from the fold, and this is the fold. And it's just easier for me to do that than lay the whole piece out and measure it, okay? So I'm gonna do it both sides. So there's, there's my one inch mark. So I'm gonna measure one inch from the fold. So I'm just going to, I can do a little sort of mark like this. I'll show you in a sec. And then it's one and a quarter from this edge. So if, if I get my proper ruler, let's get my proper ruler up. I'm not sure I like this ruler, but we'll give it a go. 
and I'll try and do it so you can see it better than me. So there's my 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 first mark, if you like, and I'll show you when I've done. But what I want to do is measure in one and a quarter from this edge. OK, so I'm just lining that up and my one and a quarter is there. So I'm just going to mark it. OK, and let me show you. I'm going to take that one out because that might confuse you. That was just my inch mark. So if I turn that round, that's what it looks like. OK, can you see that? OK, you can see those two little blue corners there. So that's one and a quarter. I've put 1.25 in the pattern because when I wrote one and a quarter, it didn't look right. It just visually, it didn't look right. So I've done 1.25. Uh, so it's 1.25, one and a quarter and a one inch from here. OK, that's one inch in. I get my arm out of the way. You can see it's one inch in. So we need to do the same on the other side to make it make it consistent. So again, I'll just put an inch marker on there. Uh, and it's this is literally a line just so I know that I'm definitely in the right place. And then it's an inch in, which is there. So again, I'll do a little mark. You don't have to do what I'm doing. You could just put a just a dot. It's fine. Lining my ruler up again finding that inch from the top and I want an inch from the side which is about there no that's not right is it an inch and a quarter <laughs> see you weren't you weren't keeping me right guys you weren't keeping me right so it's an inch and a quarter so it's around about there so if I hold that up you'll be able to see what that looks like okay so what we've got is we've got that corner and we've got that corner and what I want you to do with your channels, which I just need to trim those threads, I want you to just to marry up the corner of the channel with the corner that you've um, drawn. OK, so it doesn't go over the top. It's the corner to corner. It's oh, it's a little bit short. Oh, perhaps I got the measurements wrong, but that's about right. That's about right. So what you're going to do is just get a pin, a couple of pins, and let's just trim these threads away. Perhaps I changed the measurements and I didn't, I didn't remind myself. It doesn't matter. So, whoops, so put one pin in there and we'll open this up so we don't pin all the way through the layers. And one, one pin at the other end. OK, let's do that. So you've got two inch gap there and you've got about just over the inch and a quarter there. If we pull that along. Two more pins. And you could put one in the middle as well. So let's get this end, make sure this end is right. And then my hands are in the way, I do apologise. So little pin in there little pin in the other end. Let's get that tidied up. Sorry guys if my hands are in the way. Oh, let's turn it so it's better for me. Pin in there, just to hold it. And because we want this to be nice and straight, let's put another one in the middle. So pull it, pull it straight, pull it tight. You might want to press those folds down so they're really lovely and crispy and again here I don't normally put my pins in this way I normally have them the heads all out but I just wanted to move it so it's better for me so just move that slightly I mean you can faff away all you like but to be perfectly honest when it's drawn up when it's gathered <laughs> you won't notice so there we are so there's your channels in place so what we're going to do now is we're going to top stitch all the way along here to here and then we're going to come back don't go down and then across because your tube your channel will twist so cut your threads there and start from the top again or the side and come back on yourself there and then the same with this start from here stop there start from there stop there okay so let's just take these markers out because they're distracting just get rid of those. It's amazing. I mean, my iron isn't on, but it stays 
lovely and warm, warm enough to do this. So let's bring the machine in again. And let's make sure you can see okay. It's not too bad, is it? Not too bad. And if you wanted to, you could do a longer stitch here. Um, but bear in mind, this is um, it's quite structural here. It needs a little bit of strength. So you could keep it on 2.5. So you're going really close to the edge of your channel. Um, and this is where I start taking the pins out because they start to annoy me. Um, and so we're stopping there. And then we're just doing a nice back tack, it's a nice back stitch, nice and strong, because that's got to take the, the gathering up. Go back to the top again. When I say top, that's what it looks like for me. So um, I wonder if, you can, if we can get you in a little bit closer. I'm not sure if I can without tipping you. It's not too bad. We're okay. We can manage. That's it. Um, so you're starting back where you started before. Um, if you do it so you turn here and go up, you'll twist your channel. I mean, it doesn't make a huge amount of difference because um, you're going to gather this up. So most of the time it's going to be gathered. So you won't really notice, but it's nice to, to do things nicely and neatly. And if you were to put a channel in something else that you were going to see, then you can remember this. So back stitch, make it nice, nice and strong. Back to the top. And when I say top, it's the top of how I'm looking at it. So it's your, your left hand side. And so now I'm just coming down the other side. And just take your time. Just enjoy these little projects. That's what they're for. They're not there for anything else other than your enjoyment. Um, and just learning how to relax with your sewing machine, to have a little bit of fun, don't take um, things too seriously. Um, you know, we don't want to make an exhibition quilt, we just want to do a little bit of stitching. So if we look at that now, you'll be able to see what the top stitching looks like and that's the sort of thing that you want to sort of aim for, okay? And the ends of those channels obviously are open because that's where we're going to gather with the ribbon, okay? So with this gorgeous Riley Blake fabric, we're now going to actually join the base to the outer um, circle, the, the outer part, the outer body part. I'll get it right in a minute. So don't forget, this is the top of your little bag with the channels. So this obviously is the bottom. So we want to put our circle to the bottom, okay? And it's right sides together. Now in the pattern, this is not always easy to show you in a picture, what I'm trying to, to tell you, if you like. Um, but what you need to do, obviously it's right sides together. So there's our base, there's our body. I've got the channels at the top, so they're nowhere near my base. So this is where we're stitching, we're stitching this bit to that bit. And obviously the short edge is the sides. Now, what I want you to do is to start stitching about an inch in. So this is very similar to how we did the caddy. And it's a great, great technique because it means that we don't have to try and fit this straight edge to a circle and try and make the seams fit. If once you get around, you've got two quarter inches left, brilliant. If you haven't, it does not matter a jot. Okay, so we're starting about an inch in. I'm not going to measure it, but it's about an inch in. So start with a nice little back stitch just to hold it. And then you're working your way around, okay? So uh, my hands are going to get in the way. I make no apology because I'm the one having to do the stitching. <laughs> so I'll just get my foot control in its place. So there's my base. There is my bag. And I'm just bringing my straight edge up to my um, round edge and I'm just easing it round. Now you could snip into this, okay? You could snip the straight piece of fabric um, all the way along here. So you could cut into this every quarter of an inch with a tiny little snip and it allows it to move around the circle a lot better. But you know what, life's too short. So we're just going to stitch it and, and it'll, if you, I've got my finger on the, the base, 
and I'm turning the base with my finger. I'm holding this fabric here and I'm just keeping those raw edges together, okay? If you allow those raw edges to come apart, so in other words, you know, you, you kind of cut a corner. Let me show you, if you try, sort of, I know it's a bit exaggerated, but if you, if you cut a corner, then it's not gonna fit, it's not gonna fit. So you've got to try and keep those raw edges together. Um, and once you've done it a few times, it is really a nice, easy technique. Um, fuss free, because you don't have to pin this. I mean, well, don't. <laughs> I was gonna say you can if you want, but don't. <laughs> so just trace it around. So I'm pulling the circle base with, with my right hand, and I'm kind of guiding the top fabric with my, with my left hand. So I'm, I'm coming up to about where I started. Look, if I sort of move all this away, you can see that I'm coming back to where I started. And you can see that there's the inch. Can you see? Let me get that out of the way. You can see there's my inch that I left. Okay, that sort of sits like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop stitching about an inch from this end here. Okay, about an inch. I'm not measuring. What measuring? I don't measure. Actually, I'm a bit number blind, so it helps that I don't measure. So, <laughs> so I'm, like I say, I'm stopping about an inch. I'm not going to measure, but there we are. Okay. So if you ever look at it, I don't know which is the best way to show you like that maybe. So you can see where I where I started, whizzed around, and you can see when I where I stopped. Now, ideally. You know, if the whim's in the right direction and you're in a good mood, those two should meet fairly equally, okay? And if it's a, if, I mean, that's just a little bit more than a quarter of an inch. But you know what? I bet your bottom dollar that if we had joined these side seams up, you'd have ever such a job to get that to fit beautifully. I tr trust me, I know these things. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's how you finish start and finish and all you're going to do is kind of you kind of pinch it I can't give you another technical term if you pinch it you can see that and that's a fabulous picture because I'm looking at it on my screen you can see that that's where the seam has got to go all right so I'm just going to keep my thumb there my finger I'm going to pull that bit out and get it out my way and I'm going to bring those side seams together and I'm going to stitch it's it's a, it's, a, it's a generous quarter of an inch that I'm stitching, okay? Generous quarter of an inch. So I'm gonna stitch right up the sides. Now look, if you didn't get that, watch this back, okay? Watch it back and try to visualize what I'm doing. And then just whiz up. Whoever cut this fabric and wadding out needs sacking because it's dreadful. Look at that, doesn't even meet the, meet the sides. Um, so, of course, what you've got left is this gap, obviously, because we didn't, we had two inch gap, didn't we? So all you're going to do is just bring that down and finish stitching. So you can, you can open it up, you can open it up, you're stitching from there round to there, or you can just fold it over, whatever you like, but all you're doing is now you're closing that gap. That's all you're doing. So whatever you want to do, you can either fold it or open it. Oh, let's not worry about it. Let's just stitch it. So <laughs> I'm just going across my circle. Oh dear. Straight across. And uh, there we are. And of course, we could do trimming these off a bit. We could trim that if you like. Get your pinking shears on it. But that has joined that beautifully. And it also means that if you've stretched your base or you've stretched your sides as you've been putting it around, you've still got a little bit of play there, which means it's always going to be a lovely fit. OK, so we'll just turn that through to have a look at it. Always could do with the press. Always, always, always. And look, there's our join. I think you'll agree. That's not bad. <laughs> it's not bad. Yeah. Yeah, I'll go top of the class with that. So now what we're going to do is do the, the lining. So I'll get that out of the way. And we're going to do exactly the same with the lining, okay? But we're going to leave the turning gap 
um, up the side seam. So we're going to stitch it as I just did before. So we're going to start an inch, inch away, thereabouts. And I'm going to whiz around this one because you've already seen what, how it works. And when I say whiz, I'm not really whizzing. But I'm trying to still make sure that my raw edges um, still stay together. So I'm taking care, but I'm not probably not as careful as if I would be stitching the, the outside. Um, because life's too short. So, <laughs> so although my, my hands will be in the way, trust me that I'm doing exactly what I did before. So I move, can you see, I use my finger to move that circle and this to put onto the circle. And I know it's hard for you to see with my hands in the way but I can't stitch sideways. I haven't learned that yet. I've still got another couple of years in me, so perhaps I could learn that another time. So there we go. Round, so I'm stopping about an inch away again, thereabouts. And I'm going to do exactly the same. Do you see, it was a little bit of a short end there. Look at that, that's rubbish. It's not an inch, is it? It's like half an inch. So what I'm going to do is bring those sides together, just like we did before. And what I do, is that I match my side seams. So I match it there, look. Can you see? So whatever happens either side, I'm actually matching my side seams up. So I'm taking exactly the same off this side as I am that side. And then I can finish stitching my circle. But don't forget to leave your turning gap. So I'll stitch, oh, I don't know, and... Let's say an inch and a half. I'm moving along and I'm going to stitch another inch and a half. Okay, I'll show you. So I know it's got, we got, um, oh, have I run out of thread? Oh, that's handy, I've run out of thread. Right, let's just re-thread. So you don't want to see this. So we'll come back up here for a moment if I can do that without dropping you. There we go. So I will just re-thread my machine. There we go. <laughs> it's a bit close, but it's probably better that than seeing me try to, th to thread my machine. So, um, and actually this machine, re this bobbin, when I wind my bobbin on this machine, it really, you know, we, you, you always get told that you're supposed to put the thread through the holes in the bobbin. Well, I'm not sure about you guys, but I never, I never bother. And with this machine, it really pays off. <laughs> so I'll just give it a whiz. That'll do. And uh, we'll finish doing what our stitch. We actually we haven't got much stitching to do now. We're nearly finished. Isn't it a nice little project? So it's mini moppy. So I'll remind you at the end why I called it Mini Moppy. That the, my old, my goldie oldies or my oldie goldies <laughs> will know why I called it um, a Mini Moppy. And um, to be honest, Mini Moppy will probably be my pattern of the month for March because every, every month on my website I have a pattern of the month. Um, and this month it's Odell which is actually a really nice pattern. I will say that, I like it, they're not mine. And I was talking about this yesterday and I said, you know, after I've designed them and done all the pattern pieces and cut them out and stitched them and done the video and all the other stuff that I do, they don't become mine anymore. They kind of become yours. And I, and I, I treat them as if they're somebody else's. <laughs> so I always say, oh, that's a nice pattern. And it's, it's all of mine. And it sounds really conceited, but it's not meant to be. <laughs> so let's go back to where we were. Now I'm threaded. And let's hopefully I don't, I don't cut you off. So I'm going to pop you down and bring you over. There we go. There we are. Let's just try and get you in focus. So um, I was coming up the side seam. So again, I'm doing, it's a nice, generous quarter of an inch. So get your... Your corners, I suppose, lined up. So your bottom C, your bottom, sorry, your bottom raw edge and your side raw edge 
get those beautifully lined up. So you're taking off exactly the same each side. OK, that's it's quite important because um, it means that you when you do your channels, for instance, they'll be the same both sides. So let, let's let's go back to where we were. So that is the side piece done. So I've stitched to there and stopped, left a gap, stitched from there right up to the top. So now I'm going to close my my circle. And like I say, this is just the lining. So we don't have to worry too much about how neat it is. But obviously, if this is going to be a gift for somebody, you want it to be as best you can do, OK? And I know you always do as best as you can do. So apart from, we'll just snip that. Um, you can see that that's that little piece there now we've joined up. And uh, that's our, our lining done with a, with a turning gap. So that's good. So now we'll leave that, we'll leave that, let me just move my machine. We'll leave that as it is because you know it's right sides together. So I'm just going to put the right side of my bag into the lining, matching up the seams. OK, so that, that's the most important thing. Oh, there's Millie. She probably wants to go out for a walk now. Um, so just nest those seams if you can. Let's just trim that back a bit. Let's get that out of the way. So just nest your seams if you can. OK, can you see that OK? Um, get a clip. It's quite, I quite like to use a clip now to um, make sure that they stay together, if I can reach one. I've got about 300 clips, but of course you can never find them. And then pop your hand inside and wriggle that um, outer bag, if you like, inside so it it's fits nicely, so there's no wriggling. And then just sort of work it so it sits nicely into the lining, OK? And uh, it's still not. There we are. I've got it now. And just sort of pull it tight like that. Can you see how that looks? So you're pulling it tight and you know that that lining and that outer is going to fit beautifully. So you're stitching all the way around. So let's bring the machine in again. And we're just going to stitch around. Now, if you've got a free arm facility on your machine, this is absolutely the time to use your free arm because it sits beautifully on the machine. I don't with this. Um, but that's OK. I'm kind of used to it. Um, but a free arm facility is always great when you're doing things like this. Because really, if you think about it, if you were making a, a dress or a blouse, this is where your cuff would go if you had a free arm. I wouldn't want to stitch anything like this, you know, that needed a free arm facility on this, which is a bit of a shame because it's a great machine. <laughs> so I'm just going around the top. So I'm joining my lining and the outer piece together and just keep pulling it, make sure it still fits. Unless you've got a walking foot on, that fabric could still move, OK? So don't trust it. Don't trust it. It's a bit sneaky. <laughs> so just coming back to the start. I did actually stitch over my, my seam, but I can live with that. I can live with that. You may not. You might want to tidy that up. Oh, now somebody is suggesting that I, I use my mini moppy to keep my clips in. What a great idea. So there we are. So there's our lining and our bag outer all stitched together. So obviously now we're just going to turn through. So this is the part where oh, obviously everything gets creased and it looks a mess and you end up tugging and pulling. It's actually going to be quite a small turning gap because the side seams are only, well, they're only six inches. So you haven't got much leeway, really. But there we are. That's lovely now. It's all um, out. So um, this is the time now to give it a good iron. So let's get the uh, little mini iron in and my little mini ironing mat. And we, what we want to do is we want to make sure this seam is gorgeous. OK, it's important that it's all kept lovely and crispy and any loose, loose ends, loose threads. We can just take a moment and just sort of neaten those off. But this is where you can sort of open that seam up and get it looking gorgeous. Now, theoretically, 
the lining is exactly the same size as the outer. I, I hope you all agree. But actually, it looks better, and you'll see on this one, it looks better when you actually have a little bit of a fold over. And it doesn't really give any detriment to the depth of the bag. So that's up to you. I quite like it. And it's actually very similar in a way to the caddy that we made. And obviously you want to stitch your turning gap, guys. I'm just going to forget that it's there. Okay, I'm just, I'm just going to ignore it because that's the sort of thing I do. Um, <laughs> so just go around, give it a nice press. We'll, we'll pretend that I've stitched it. I could even do the noise. Zzz, stitched. Um, so now what we're going to do is just poke that lining in. And do you see how, because we've used wadding, do you see how it naturally wants to, to stay out? It naturally wants to poke out. And that's because there is that quarter of an inch seam allowance there. And it's standing upright. And that's what's giving it, if it's like a bit of a bulk really. It's like, um, kind of like a brick wall. You can, of course, press that under and top stitch and keep it beautiful. Or you can do what I'm doing and just and leave it out like that. I quite like it like that. There's no reason why it has to go right down the bottom of your caddy, oh, sorry, wrong product, down to the bottom of your moppy. But give it a press. I'm not sure I pressed that other one. There isn't, a, I haven't got a measurement for that. I just, when I made it, I just decided I, that's what I liked. Um, but you don't have to, you can, you can decide. It'd be interesting to see the photos. Oh, quick reminder, the new Facebook group, for those that like Facebook, um, there is a Facebook group now called Making It Monday. And it's where you can post your pictures. You can comment on other people's pictures. And it's going to be like a gallery. So go and have a look. Join up. There's no cost involved. There's no sort of hidden, hidden things that I would have done. It's literally going to be a place where you can post your pictures. Um, because what was happening, and it was quite noticeable, that all my gold ladies, who obviously joined me on a Monday evening, they were posting all their pictures of everything they'd made, and I can honestly say there are hundreds, and they were posting them in the gold group. Well, that's a private group, and nobody was seeing them. And I'm thinking, this is such a shame. So look, all I've done is, now look, I, I'm sorry, I'm an old fashioned gal and I use a safety pin. I'm sure there's lots of gadgets and gizmos that you can use other than a safety pin, but we've only got a little channel here, so I'm not worried. By the time that I push all this through, all the way around, all this end here will be frayed, so I'll cut it off. But it's a 34 inch length of um, ribbon and it's half an inch wide and it's a double double sided satin well in fact it's uh, yes yeah, double sided thereabouts so you're going in from one channel on the side here and you're taking that all the way through so I'll, I'll try to do it so you can see we'll see how we get on and you're just pushing that whatever gadget you decide there's no right or wrong I don't want anybody to tell me, oh, you should have done it that way because I use a safety pin all the time. So now what you're going to do is hop across and you're going into that channel there. So you've got to remember, I've been stitching for 60 years. So I have old fashioned ways of doing stuff and I ain't going to change. I don't care how much you moan. So look, see how that ribbon looks. <laughs> so just give it enough. Give it enough with your scissors. Cut it off, make it nice and neat. And because we want this to stay as it is, you know, in it, so it, you don't pull the ribbon out, just put a nice neat little knot. And you know, you could neaten this up again. So it looks absolutely gorgeous. Look at that, beautiful. And that'll always stay nice and neat, okay? So now what you're going to do is, you're gonna do the opposite. So where we came in and out this side, we're now gonna go in and out this side. And of course you could, I mean, this is twisted now, but uh, I'm, I am actually not gonna lose any sleep over that whatsoever. So I've hooked up the other end of my ribbon and I'm now going the opposite way. 
So we have, we're going to come out uh, where we finished before. So I'm just going to pull that through. And then I'm just hopping across. So I'm just literally hopping across to the other channel, feeding it through and just coming out the other end. Okay. And if you're really pedantic, by all means, make sure that it's not twisted, but I'm, I'm not too, too fussed. By the time you've drawn this up a few times, it'll twist anyway. And, uh, and it'll, it'll also go a little bit stretched and what have you. So just neatening off my ends. Let's get my ironing mat out of the way. And there is our ribbon threaded. Okay, I think you can see that quite well. And then all you do is pull. Look at that. Doesn't that look gorgeous? I love the orange with the pink, don't you? And then because we can, we can do a nice pretty little bow in the front. And that, ladies and gents, is our mini moppy. Okay, actually it could be a better bow, I'll be honest. <laughs> but that looks really sweet. And actually I'm on, uh, I'm on TV again tomorrow, so that'll be another sample for TV tomorrow. So I'm just gonna move you up. Oof, let's hope I don't cut you off. I'm gonna move you out so you're not so close. Because, uh, you know, I'm not, not young anymore. I'm going to bring it like that. Now, look, can you see that side? No. Let me... <laughs> Let's go this side. Can you see my big moppies there? Can you see my big moppies? So, big moppy was made, or oh, might be, it's coming up to two years ago now. And, and it's a, such a popular make. And I think I might do another workshop with it. And uh, so, so Moppy was born. I don't call it Big Moppy, it's just Moppy. So Moppy was born, and you can see I've got three. <laughs> and then I decided that this should be Mini Moppy. So we've got Big Moppy, and we've now got two Mini Moppies. Aren't they the cutest? I can't help it. I like little things like this, don't you? And it's such a great little make. I mean, what time is it? We're just a little bit over, but then we were late to start. So less than an hour. You're going to make this in less than an hour because you're not going to wrap it on like me, are you? You're just going to get on with it. So that, my dears, is making it Monday. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to pop over to the Making It Monday Facebook page. Go and join that. You don't have to participate, you can just be a viewer, but you can certainly go and post your makes, can't you? You can go and uh, post your makes that you've made from Making It Monday. And even if it's one of the really first ones that we did way back in probably November, was it? Then post pictures of that. If you can find them on your phone, <laughs> I can never find them, but if you can find them on your phone, go and post them all and we can have a look at them. And all the other ladies and gents will also comment on there as well, and that's great. And it's open to everybody. So it's open to, all, obviously, all of my gold ladies and gents. It's open to followers of Lizzie Curtis. It's open to followers on uh, YouTube as well. And obviously to anybody that's str the stragglers <laughs> on Liz Curtis' page. I know there's lots, can't help it. And of course, if you're a fan of Abigail and Adrienne, then of course you can follow it too. So it's open to everybody.